Well, howdy there, Internet people. It's Bo again. So today, we are going to talk about some big, big news uh, when it comes to foreign policy, diplomacy, everything in the region. Um, and it has three different pieces. Now, each one of these pieces we have talked about on the channel at some point in time. However, it appears that they all just got tied together. And uh, not to overstate it, but if this moves forward, it would literally alter the entire landscape in the Middle East. Primarily, it involves three countries. There's another country that's really important later, but we'll, we'll get to that. Starting off, Saudi Arabia, Israel, and the United States. Saudi Arabia, for a long time, has wanted a defense pact with the U.S., along with some trade agreements and stuff like that, but the defense pact is the big one. Israel has wanted normalized international relationships with Saudi Arabia. It's incredibly important to them because Saudi Arabia has a lot of the holy sites. So, the trends that start there they spread throughout the Middle East. Now, to the U.S., this is all good. A defense pact with Saudi Arabia, well, that's good for them. It's good for the U.S. Normalized relationships between those two countries, that's good for the U.S. because of the whole balance of power thing. We've talked about it a bunch, three regional powers, Israel, Saudi Arabia, and Iran. If you get Saudi Arabia and Israel to be friends, it allows the U.S., and by friends I mean have shared interests, it allows the U.S. to deprioritize the Middle East, which is a long-term strategic goal. You don't have to worry about it so much if you have two regional power allies that are in the region. You, you, can, you can pay attention to other things. So everybody's happy with this. Everybody gets what they want. And each one of these items for a long time has been viewed as a separate entity. They all got tied together. I mean, the, the long-term strategy of the U.S. isn't like an agreed thing. The two agreements are the defense pact and the normalization of the relationship. The U.S. move on this would be real simple. Hey, Saudi Arabia, we'll give you your defense pact. You, you know, establish better ties with Israel. Everybody's happy. Israel gets what they want. The Saudis get what they want. The U.S. gets, you know, a, a better position. But there's another country that has been thrown into the mix. Palestine. The, uh, the way this is currently set up and the way it's being described is that the Saudis get their defense treaty, or not a treaty, pact, sorry. Um, Israel gets that relationship stabilized, and there has to be a, quote, credible and irreversible pathway to a Palestinian state. And they all go forward, or none of them go forward. This is currently being framed as the Saudis really, really wanting it. I mean, sure, sure. I, I can see that, that as being the case. They definitely want that. Do they want it bad enough to say that it's a condition? I mean, I don't know about that, especially since every U.S. move has been angling in this direction. The normalized relationship between Saudi Arabia and Israel, that is something that Israeli foreign policy really wants really wants. Um, 
it, it, it appears that the United States brought out the big chips at the international poker game where everybody's cheating. Um, it, it's either that or the Saudis saw that the U.S. was angling in that direction and was like, you know what? We can look great in the Middle East. Let's, let's just make this a condition. We know the U.S. will go for it. And maybe they initiated it. So this, if this moves forward, it alters not just, not just the map. We're not just talking about the creation of a state uh, for Palestinians. It, it alters the Mideast because eventually the defense pact, it could move to include other countries like Israel or Bahrain or Palestine. Eventually, you might end up with Matt Meadow, the Middle East Treaty Organization. Um, it's a big deal, and this is what they're working on now. This also definitely indicates that the Saudis are on board with a plan for the, quote, day after. Um, so... It's a big development. There's obviously going to be uh, a lot of negotiation that has to occur. But this is now tying a Palestinian state to something that Israel has wanted for a very, very long time. Um, it is a, a huge thing. Now, the other question that I know is going to come in, you know, if the U.S. does get to engage in its long-term strategy and deprioritize the Middle East, does that mean that, you know, the U.S. isn't going to be engaging in military adventurism and all of that stuff? I mean, sure, in the Middle East, they'll, they'll stop. But it's to free up resources to, to go do it in Africa. If you're looking for the downside, that's it. That, that's, that's where the downside lies. Um, so this is definitely something to watch. And this might be the, uh, the sweetener to alter some attitudes that have been reluctant to engage in a, a long-term peace process. Anyway, it's just a thought. Y'all have a good day.